spaceweathernews.com, and the last day was really starting to look like the final throws of sunspot minimum. Bright active regions, dark coronal holes, but mostly calm thus far as the long 11-year cycle ramps up again slowly. The active regions do not have any sunspots below the bright umbral magnetic fields, which is expected at this stage. As the sunspots return, they will get increasingly large and long-lasting, but it's a process. Yesterday morning, a relatively unexciting coronal plasma filament group bunched and began trying to release on the northwestern limb. Almost like a stealth CME as the coronal release was nearly imperceptible, it was a slow but dense CME, and it's not headed at Earth. Solar wind really quick here to see the peak two days ago in purple plasma speed and the dropout since then. Geomagnetic conditions are calm and quiet with the tamer plasma stream. The top earthquake of the last day hit Papua New Guinea. Yesterday we had reported the Puerto Rico rumble and while the Caribbean is still shaking this morning, the western Pacific has joined in activity including blood echoes at some familiar depths, including a transition zone event we've come to see before Japan goes higher in magnitude. And now we're off because the first ever Earth-sized exoplanet in a habitable zone has been discovered by TESS. It's TOI 700D, and it orbits a star much smaller than the Sun, at a distance much closer than the Earth to the Sun. But with these scaled down sizes, the heat content of the planet should be able to support liquid water across a great deal of it. The graphic here shows how TOI compares to other known systems, including our own up top. Indeed, both the water and the compositional chart for this planet is falling very close to where Earth falls on those charts. We've got one more from TESS actually, and it's the TOI 1338 system, where there's both a little b and a big b. Folks, this is TESS's first Tatooine-like system. Big A and Big B are the binary stars, while little b is a planet orbiting them both. The smaller star is much dimmer and actually affects the light curve of the brighter star during its transit, but they also noted a smaller dip in there and a mathematical pattern between them. Folks, this is called resonance, and it happens so often in celestial situations of orbit, it's hard to imagine random chaotic effects of gravity being the culprit, especially when we know an electromagnetic system is going to produce a similar pattern. Folks, we are off to M87, the famous black hole image galaxy. You'll recall yesterday morning we showed you the video where Dr. Robitaille debunked it, but today we're seeing...